number 16 to 30. I'll explain uh, these 15 questions in this video lecture. I explained first 15 questions in the previous video. If you're interested to watch that, then look into the playlist and you can find a video next to this video, I think. Okay, so question number 16 is the market for goods Z is in equilibrium with 1000 units sold at a price of $10. The government pays subsidy of $2 per unit to producers of goods Z. Under which condition will the total spending by the government on subsidy uh, be smallest? Option A is correct answer for this question. Price elasticity of demand is less than 1 that is inelastic and price elasticity of supply is less than 1 that is also inelastic. So when demand and supply are inelastic definitely they bring a smaller impact. So subsidy provided by the government will bring a smallest impact in this case. Question number 17, if an industry is currently state owned and state run, what does not represent a reason for it being privatized? So B is the correct answer. The benefits of merit goods will be taken into consideration in decision making. So private industries uh, basically don't consider uh, private bene uh, benefits of merit goods, right? So uh, th this, this is not basically the reason here. Okay, so question number 18 says, what does uh, the incidence of an indirect tax on product refers to. Uh, correct answer is option A, the proportion of tax paid by the consumers relative to the producers. Incidence of tax basically shows the tax burden or impact of uh, tax on consumers and producers. So option A represents incidence of tax. Okay, so moving to question number uh, 19. A government wishes to influence the price of a good. It introduces maximum price P max and minimum price P min. And the diagram shows these prices relative to current market price P. This is the current market price that is P. Maximum price and minimum price both are set by the government below equilibrium. We know that minimum price below equilibrium is ineffective so this cannot be the answer and maximum price below equilibrium is effective. So option B is the correct answer. Only the maximum price will be effective because it is set below equilibrium. Maximum price set below equilibrium is effective and minimum price set above equilibrium is effective. If minimum price is set at this point, then it will be effective. If it is set below equilibrium, then it is ineffective. Okay, so moving to question number 20. Uh, a government removes the tariff on the product as shown below when tariff is removed definitely world supply with tariff was this and after tariff it is this so supply has shifted to shifted downward so initially domestic supply was at this point at this point when supply was this one this is the initial supply world supply so price was p1 and domestic suppliers were supplying this much quantity at price p1 and when tariff is removed, world supply curve will move downward and now price is P2 and against P2 price domestic suppliers are, this is domestic supply, so domestic suppliers are willing to supply V quantity. What will be the change in domestic, uh, domestic production? Uh, it will reduce um, a reduction of WV, this, this is the correct answer, option A. So initially domestic producers were supplying this much, now they will be supplying V. So it will reduce from W to V. Okay, so uh, moving to the next question, uh, question number 21. An economy is initially in equilibrium, which combination of events will definitely cause an increase in the general price level of the economy and decrease in real output? So for question number 21, answer correct answer is D. Aggregate demand should de uh, should remain unchanged and aggregate supply should decrease then definitely price level in the economy will rise and output will fall. So we can make a graph to uh, verify this as well. So this is real GDP or real output on X origin point on Y we have price level. So this is aggregate demand and this is aggregate supply. So initially aggregate demand and supply meet each other at point D e where price level is P and real output is Y. Now if aggregate demand is unchanged it remains the same 
and there is decrease in aggregate supply then aggregate supply will move to the left and it will shift somewhere at AS1 new equilibrium will take place at E1 where price will rise to P1 and real output will decrease to Y1 so price has increased real output has decreased so this was the re requirement of question that price will rise and output will fall decrease moving to question number uh, 22 the diagram uh, the government of a country changes from balanced budget uh, balanced budget to budget deficit budget deficit balanced budget is when government income and expenditure both are equal and budget deficit is when government spends more than its income so um, when we run government budget deficit then it increases aggregate demand in the economy from which point along the country's long run aggregate supply curve will this change cause the largest increase in employment without creating inflationary pressure so option a is correct answer for this because if initially at point a let's suppose aggregate demand is this much so real output will be y and price level is p here and now if there is increase in aggregate demand because of budget deficit aggregate demand is basically c plus i plus g plus x minus m and if g increases aggregate G stands for government expenditure and if government expenditure increases overall aggregate demand will increase and aggregate demand shifts to the right. So new equilibrium will be at point B for example and real output will increase from Y to Y1 but still when we look into the price then at point B price is again the same. So this is the requirement of the question that it will not be an inflationary it will not increase the price uh, however it will increase the output. Moving to question number 23, the price and volume indices of a country's imports and exports are shown in the table for year 2 and what is uh, the country's terms of trade? Terms of trade, we have a formula to find out terms of trade. Terms of trade is equal to uh, price index of exports over price index of imports multiplied by 100. So we have to find out terms of trade in year 2. So these are the figures relevant to year 2. So price index uh, of exports is 121. So we can put 121 here and 110 here and then multiply by 100. So it will give us 110. So 110.0 option C will be the correct answer for question number 23. Um, now question number 24. What is a certain outcome on an aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram of an increase in factor productivity if factor of production becomes more productive and efficient then it will definitely uh, increase aggregate supply and when aggregate supply shifts uh, increases it shifts to the right or it shifts downward right so when aggregate supply increases this is let's suppose initial aggregate supply if aggregate supply increases it will move to the right or we call it downward shift in aggregate supply so option b is correct answer 25 uh, trade in services is a component of current account of balance of payment what is an example of trade in services so c is the correct answer income from foreign tourism tourism is ki kind of service so it will be recorded as a service or invisible trade which statement about changing price level is correct okay so option a is correct answer anyone on fixed income has rising income during real income during deflation deflation is when price level falls when price level falls real income increases so this is uh, the correct statement question number 27 what would be likely to decrease inflation in an econo economy and uh, like uh, decrease inflation in an economy inflation is when general price level increases so here in this case we want to decrease general price level so c is the correct answer increase in labor productivity increase in labor productivity increases aggregate supply and reduces price level so when price level decreases inflation will be reduced uh, you can make a graph as well so this is aggregate demand this is aggregate supply and this is the price level and this is real output y if labor productivity increases then aggregate supply will increase because labor is now more efficient and productive so it will produce more aggregate supply will shift to the right so new equilibrium will be at e1 instead of e 
and real GDP will increase from Y to Y1 and price level will decrease from P to P1. So when price level falls, inflation is decreased. Question number 28, which uh, change in economic circumstances is most likely to lead to reduction in rate of domestic inflation in an economy? And the answer is worldwide recession. When, when worldwide recession occurs, then aggregate demand falls. And when aggregate demand falls again, uh, it, it is mo most likely to decrease inflation as well. So you can again make the graph. This, this is aggregate demand. This is aggregate supply. Equilibrium is initially at E where price is P, real GDP is Y. Decrease in aggregate demand will shift aggregate demand to the left. New equilibrium will move downward and price will decrease to P1. Real GDP will decrease to Y1. So worldwide recession decreases aggregate demand and decreases price level. Question number 29 is a country is currently experiencing deflation. Deflation is when price level decreases decreases over time it has large national debt uh, that is greater than national re uh, annual real income and which combination of policies is most likely to increase price level right so we have to focus on increase price level and without adding to the national debt national debt should not be increased basically so fiscal policy will cater national debt right so we should reduce budget deficits so option a and b can be correct answer and we can cross these two options now because when budget deficit decreases it means we uh, need not to get loans so national debt will incre will decrease instead of increasing what monetary policy should because we want to increase the price level so it should be expansionary monetary policy so option b is inflationary or expansionary monetary policy in which we increase money supply and when money supply increases aggregate demand will increase and price level will also rise so again you can make the graph like this this is aggregate demand and supply this is ad this is as now if as ad increases expansionary monetary policy increases aggregate demand uh, so equilibrium will move upward price will rise to P1 real GDP will rise to Y1 so price will increase when price increases it is inflationary impact moving to the last question uh, which government action will conflict with named economic target so these are the economic targets we have to find out uh, the action that will conflict with this mean that will not help help to achieve this target so option is correct answer lower price level if you want to lower the price level that cannot be achieved by lowering the exchange rate so these this is a conflict because if you lower the exchange rate then you cannot achieve low price targets or price inflation because when exchange rate is low it increases uh, x minus m that is net export and when net export increases aggregate demand will rise and same impact will be created as we have shown above so price level will increase so the question is targeting to lower inflation but in this case inflation will increase so this is uh, against the target uh, set here so this is it um, I, I believe you got some uh, concepts cleared and if you have any issue with this question paper or any other question paper or you want me to explain for you then you may write in the comment box or you may contact me on my whatsapp number zero triple three double four two nine six seven three rather you can write it like plus nine two triple three double four two nine six seven three so this is it for uh, today's class see you soon inshallah Allah Hafiz.